All right, so for today's Nakshatra class, we're going to talk about each of the Nakshatras. We're going to finally introduce each of the 27 Nakshatras. And then we're going to talk about just little keywords for them, like quick ways to think of them and conceptualize them. And I'm going to also give you guys like some pop culture terms and some more um, updated terms to be able to associate with these Nakshatras. And then I'm also going to just touch on the deity if I can remember to. <laughs> okay. So, but again, we're going to go into this so much more deep in depth in further classes, but this is just to give you guys quick keywords to associate with each of the 27 star fields. All right. So Nakshatra keywords, Kritika, the first Nakshatra. This is like the original first Nakshatra. So that's a good way to think of it. It's kind of the number one. Um, and it's ruled by Agni, the god of fire. Agni is the one who comes first in the Vedas. So uh, like the, 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 he's the prime deity. All of Vedic philosophy is a worship of fire. It's all a fire religion. Fire is spirit. It's the self burning and ascending upwards. Uh, as a result, this is kind of a central star. This is a star of bosses and generators and creators and initiators. Um, it's a hungry star. This is a star for people who are trying to burn the fire. You can think of people who are always in the what people call boss mode nowadays or people who are just very type A people or alpha type people um, are going to have, you know, oh, this is this next chapter relates to that. It's, and it's ruled by the sun, you know, which is the most alpha planet, the king planet. Um, and, you know, Agni is the original de David, like he's the first de deity mentioned in the Veda. The first line of the first verse or the first sutra of the first Veda is Agni, you know, it's all about him. Um, and Agni is he who comes first, like that's also a meaning of Agni. So fire is that which, you know, comes first and fire leads the way. Like when you're, when you're traveling, fire is what guides you as you're holding light, you know, fire is what comes first and leads the way. Um, so it's the star of fire worship. It's a star of uh, ritualism and uh, cutting. Kritika means the cutter, so chopping and cutting. And uh, when you think back to the Vedic fire rituals and all that stuff, it, it comes from when the, the vernal equinox was happening in Kritika. Um, so that's very much a little bit on Kritika. It's the star of uh, a key word you can think of is generation, burning, fire, like just generating energy and, and, and keeping things going like that. Fire always needs something to burn to be going. All right, Rohini. Rohini is uh, the rule by Brahma, the creator. So you can just think of it as the star of growth and creation because Rohini just is all about growth. And it's, you can think of a key word for it as the popular star. Uh, Mrs. Popular or Mr. Popular. These Rohini people are just really popular and they're really well loved. And Rohini was always in the myths, the favorite star of the moon, the favorite wife of the moon. Remember, these are all wives or Shaktis or energies of the moon, the consciousness, the ego mind. And this one grows things the best. So it was the favorite of the favorite wife of the moon. Okay, number three, Invaka or uh, Mrigashira, as it's more commonly known, star of weaving, the star of networking, the star of uh, intermingling. Um, it's ruled, brought, ruled by the deity Soma, the god of the elixir of immortality, but this is the elixir of worldly immortality. So it's about chasing that worldly Soma in life. We're gonna talk a lot more about that. I have so much more I wanna share about you guys, but I wanna keep it simple. So. These people are chasing that worldly life. Um, you can think of this as the star of tweeting, networking, star of social media, star of van life, like people who want to, there's kind of like this trend amongst uh, the younger generations that they see, they get kind of advertised this whole like concept of like van life, living in a van and traveling around and it really appeals to these Mrigashira types who are always hunting for the Soma and they feel like they have to keep searching and traveling and hunting for it. Um, 
But of course, that never in Vedic philosophy that will never fully fulfill you. So the next star is Ardra, ruled by Shiva, Rudra, the god of destroying these uh, worldly desires and the god of real immortality, spiritual immortality, conscious immortality, not worldly immortality. So Ardra is actually the star of um, the violators. Uh, calling out the violators, dealing with the violators. So it's actually a star of, um, it's also a star of metabolizing, kind of like Kritika. It's, it's about, um, Ardra literally means like sweat, moisture, freshness. Like it means like this effort that has created a sweat, a perspiration. So it's about um, transforming and, and striving. Yep. So it's a star of uh, metabolism. Like it takes things and it transforms them and destroys them and puts them where they need to be. So you can think of that as metabolism and also a little bit about uh, destroying the corruption within you spiritually as well. Punarvasu can think of as the star of recycling. <laughs> These people love recycling because Punarvasu is really the star of renewal and regenerating things. Um, and it's ruled by Aditi, the mother goddess, who actually is the mother of many of these other deities that we're gonna come to uh, this idea of recycling, renewal, people who love, like those screensavers that are always like some geometric thing that just keeps recycling itself. They love things like that. Um, almost kind of like people that love, oh yeah, people that love like psychedelics, deadheads, grateful dead people, jam band people who love to be tripping and just like kind of in this sort of state all the time. Um, that, that's Purnavasu can be, you can see some afflictions if they're really into that, but you can see that going on in Purnavasu star of uh, recycling and um, things like that, patterns. Tisha, um, you can think of Tisha as the star of abundance, the star of fruition. Um, it's ruled by the deity Brihaspati, the guru of the gods, the teacher of the sages. So he's what teaches you how to step into your divine nature, how to come to fruition. Pusha literally means like a, a nourished, a fully blossomed lotus, you know? Um, and uh, so it's a star of actually like manifesting that idea, star of law of attraction. It's a star of a part-time guru also. <laughs> um, I'll explain, hopefully be able to explain more of what I mean by that later. Um, Aslesha, star of entanglement, star of embracing. These people love to get entangled with things, just like the Nagas that rule the star, um, which are the serpent-like deities in Hindus. And we'll, we'll talk a lot more about that. I don't wanna to spend too much time on that, but it's ruled by the Nagas. So it's uh, their serpents get entangled and caught in things and they wrap around things. So Aslesha is really fascinated by these, the infinity, the spirals, the ongoing creation. They're always, uh, uh, it's this hypnotic dance that they're uh, that this star is all about, and they're very uh, interested in those things, and also can have a hypnotic quality themselves. Um, it's a star of poison as well. You can think of it as the star of poison, or getting entangled with poison, or how you deal with poison. Um, Maga is ruled by the ancestors, the Pitris. And Maga is actually a star of um, like inheritance and your, your privilege, as we call it these days. So Maga is, would be the star of privilege and even white privilege, you know, all that stuff. Um, Maga is that star. And um, then Purva, Pal, Purva Palguni is the, uh, the star of passion, sex, the, the Tinder star, the dating app star if you wanted to give it some name. Um, and uh, it's ruled by the, uh, the god of marriage and union and, and Aryaman and Baga are actually both, they're kind of different texts, give them to different ones, both of these stars. They're both very, very connected. So the next one too is very similar, but it's more about the star of, uh, like Uttara Palguni is more of the fixed, firm, the committed marriage material star. So Purva Palguni is a little bit more flirtatious, um, not as focused on um, like true love and marriage. And then Uttara Palguni is more about that. It's like the really good 
husband, really good partner star, um, best man, best woman, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's the star of marriage and companionship. We can just put it that way. Then Hasta, um, the hand, is the star of skill, uh, dexterity, um, awareness. Actually, yeah, no, I'm sorry. It's the star of understanding and awareness, which connects to your hand. Then the next, uh, and it's ruled by Savita, the sun, the, which the morning sun, which wakens the day, so it's bright and brilliant. The next star is Chitra, which is ruled by the craftsmen of the gods, Vishvakarma. And we're gonna, you know, again, just touching on these things a little bit, but that's the star of craftsmanship and dexterity and perfectionism. So when you see these perfectionist people, you'll see Chitra a lot coming up a shockingly large amount. Um, oh, Hasta, I didn't give the, the stereotypical phrase. Hasta is the nakshatra of know-it-alls or the nakshatra of delivery. Um, Svati is, uh, Sva means a self, Svati is uh, ruled by Vayu, the wind god, the breath, the individuality. What your breath is, what makes you a separate being and therefore makes you individual. Wind element is related to individuality on all levels in the occult. So the wind god rules the individual star. It's the selfie star. If you want to think of it as a, that's my stereotype. Self, Svati is the selfie star, okay? And people with, and if there's a, if there's strong things in Swati, they probably take an appropriate amount of selfies. If it's more afflicted, you'll notice they take a lot more selfies than most people. Um, <laughs> for good or worse, I'm just, I'm not, no judgment here. I'm just, just observation. Um, but it's the star of individuality. It's the star of the self. Look at me, I'm here. Okay, we're going to talk a lot more about that later. But Vishaka, this is the star of Dharma. It's ruled by um, Agni and um, Indra Agni, sorry, Whew, just based on that for a moment. Indra Agni, um, Indra and Agni together, very spiritual, very dharmic, all about righteousness, doing the right thing. It's also about coupling, coming together, these two deities joining, becoming more powerful. So it's a star of dharma, uh, rapid progress, synergy, star of uh, one pointedness, uniting opposites, and um, accomplishment. Anuradha is ruled by the god of uh, love and Mitra, you know, um, and union making. So it's really the star of friendship, love making, and union. Um, yes, Purvapalguni was the star of Tinder, you see, and hooking up. This is a star of real friendship and real union um, that doesn't necessarily even need sex, but that's also naturally connected too. Um, so it's the friendship star, really. Just Anuradha is the friendship star. Jeshta is the paranoia star. Jeshta is the star of hierarchy. You can say this, the hierarchy star or the paranoia star. I, I like both. It's ruled by Indra, the king of the gods. When you're the king, you're always kind of paranoid. And uh, we're going to go into a lot more why that is later. Mula, ruled by Nariti or the goddess of destruction. Rudrani, the opposite of Rudra. Rudra is over there ruling Ardra. The opposite star is his wife, Mula. And this is a star of destruction. And uh, what's actually funny is it's the star of whistleblowers. The, the whistleblowers, uh, the people that come out and call out these things, and then everyone hates them and just ridicules them for being conspiracy theorists and all this stuff. And they, they get hated on and ridiculed. But then later, like 10 years later, the truth comes out and it was real. People have a lot of Mula stuff going on. Purvashada. This is the star of surfing, the star of assembly, the star of strength in numbers. It's ruled by Apas, the river goddess, the flowing water. So yes, it will have a lot to do with surfers and people who are uh, doing something else that's really like flowing and riding the, riding the waves. Um, but it also is a star of bringing things together and assembly and, and uh, strength in numbers like how water becomes stronger and stronger if you as it gathers and you know you can have the strength to burst a dam eventually um Purvashada is the star of overachievers <laughs> okay this is a really funny one um like brad pitt a lot of people that have the star really prominent very very much overachievers champions victorious it's ruled by the vishvadevas which are the universal gods and this is just always known as a victorious star. That's nothing new to you guys, probably. 
Shravana, this is the star of podcasts, okay? This is the star of talking and listening and conversing and naturally podcasts. Star of conversation. It's also the star of walking. Um, it's ruled by Vishnu, who is deeply intertwined with all of those things. Uh, Shravishta or Danishta is the star of celebrities, the star of social media influencers, all that stuff, because it's ruled by the Vasus, which have to do with the divine qualities in life. And it's all about kind of um, becoming influential and wealthy and being heard. That's actually really the key to Danishta. Um, Shatabishak is uh, the star of surveillance and seeing. It's ruled by Varuna, the, the one who was the overseer. And it's the star of smartphones, actually. And um, people with this, a lot of smartphones, just an ability to get information, get all this access. Uh, they're very much into all this sort of thing. Surveillance, uh, sort of almost like Jeshta, a little paranoid in that sense, you know? But that's, it's got a very vast rule. You know, Varuna was the god of the skies and the open expanse. They're just very, they're very into wide open spaces as well and things like that. Um, but it's all about perception, the star of perception, smartphone, surveillance. Um, and then Purva Bhadrapada is the star of self-destruction, the star of sacrifice. It's ruled by the fiery dragon, Avatar of Shiva, um, Ajaikapada, um, and uh, we'll, this one's really deep, so I don't want to say much more about it, but it's just a very fiery, likes to destroy and sacrifice, um, and uh, that can be very spiritual as well, because it's ruled by the, the Shiva energy. Uttara Bhadrapada is the star of, ruled by Ananta, the serpent of the depths. It's the star of... Um, I'm gonna explain more why this is, but it's the star of the philosophy major. Okay, that's my term, the philosophy major. If you think about that and, you know, philosophy majors are stereotyped as uh, not ever like being able to do anything with their degree, right? Like not being able to do anything worldly with it, but still being sort of worldly, or you would have gone to an ashram or you wouldn't even gone to an academic school, right? You wouldn't even gone to a university to get your understanding of philosophy if you're not somewhat worldly, you would have just gone to an, a real expert on philosophy who doesn't have time to go through worldly hoops and who is, you know, just living his own life normally, or, you know, you'd go to a guru, in other words. Um, so it's the star of being spiritual and worldly and consecrating material life in a spiritual way. But eventually it's about, you know, kind of reaching the, the more spiritual state, but uh, it's a philosophy major star, you know? So it's about, it's like the bar, the bar, um, <clears throat> the bar stool astrologer. Anyways, next one, Revati. This is the star of the, of nourishment, of the cow, of the wealth, of um, parents, childhood. And this is actually a star of one percenters, people who are really, really, um, very, very into their wealth and their family and keeping that money in the family and that do and are very closely connected <clears throat> to their parents uh, and that family wealth and that stuff. Um, Ashwini, um, oh, and it's ruled by Pushan, the, the shepherd god. We're gonna go into that more later. Ashwini is ruled by the Ashvins, the horse-headed deities that are all about solving problems and fixing things. So it's really the star of solutions, the star of uh, self-empowerment, it's a star of self-help books, okay? So Ashwini is the self-help star. And then Barani is ruled by Yama. Uh, this is the workaholic star, okay? This is the responsibility star. The pathologically responsible star is Barani because it's ruled by Yama, the deity who has the greatest responsibility of all to dish out our karma to each person exactly as it must be. Um, so that's the star of people who are uh, pathological workaholics or pathologically responsible. Okay, so that's all the next shots. I hope that gives you guys just a little keywords, something to ponder on um, and, you know, build off of. Thanks, you guys.